Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake. This is Flarek. This is Mac. And this is going to be our preview episode for the Kyushu Basho. If you want to learn about the crazy Bonske that came about for this one, you can go back and listen to our Bonske review episode that we put out about last week. Uh, just so everybody knows, we are recording this episode on Thursday, so it's about three days before the Basho begins. And so I don't think we've seen any effects. Official Kyujo announcements, but They're, they usually wait for us to record. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but we have a pretty good idea of who's going to be in and who's going to be out when we're talking about this. So, but when we inevitably pick a guy to win the U show and he pulls out before we even release this, um, word to the wise: probably stay away from Takayasu and Takakesho. I, I, well, yeah, I have no idea what you're talking saying about. at this point. <laughs> Actually, I think uh, Takakesho is looking pretty good. I think last we heard he was coming in. But we're getting into actual talks. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, we have to do other BS first before we're allowed to talk about Sumo. More BS. Good call. Speaking of BS, let's go out to our reporter B and see what he has in store for us for a recap of the Akiba show. Hey, guys. B here with your Waki Aki Wacky Aki 2019 recap. This, this show, five stars, maybe six. This pay-per-view was perfect. We've been talking about for how many months now, building for the future, making new stars, getting fresh talent over, and this is how you do it. Let's cut right to the chase. Takekesho, Mitake Yumi, Asunoyama. Give it time, and people will be saying those names in the same breath as Cena, Orton, and Brock, or Okada, Naito, and Devitt. Not only did they have a well-built, dramatic show that went to one hell of a climax, but they pulled out the playoff stip for the first time in how long? I mean, that's what happens when stips mean something. Cough, hell in a cell, cough. And hey, at least this one didn't end in a ref stoppage. Not just that, but you might as well have Enho start doing yes chants because he's more Daniel Bryan than Bryan ever was. I can only imagine what kind of merch checks he's bringing back to Miyagino. He'll be main eventing in no time. Granted, there was some weirdness. Going back to the well for the Tochiwake bounce seems gratuitous. And Okinomi is, you know, I mean, it was wacky, I guess. But I'm glad they went what they did instead. Anyway, this pay-per-view's got me pumped for November. I just hope they don't go Nexus and have Hakuho take a DDT on the sand before it Zen Show to pop a rating. Anyway, see you for Kishu. Interesting take on the booking there. Yeah, uh, I don't appreciate his opinions on Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan is the best forever and ever. How dare you even compare him to Enho? It's not even right. Hey, wait, Enho is amazing. Yeah, I'm on the fence on this one. Hey, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into our Kyushu preview. And the biggest story going into Kyushu, I think, is the biggest story for the entire year, pretty much, is the ever-shifting Ozeki landscape. <laughs> so, And quite the landscapes they are. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> tall, mountainous men. Yes. Kind of. <laughs> but we haven't had the same group of tall, mountainous, shapely men in back-to-back Basho <laughs> since Hatsu and Haru earlier this year, which I didn't do enough research to figure out how, like, how many Basho... I mean, it's four Basho in a row that we've had a different set of Ozeki, but if that's, like, a record or... Oh, probably. I mean, it mm-hmm. very rarely probably. would happen. Let's just like not that. research that. Yeah. yeah. Did we have at least one Basho this year where we did not have a Kadoban Ozeki? Ooh, probably not. Probably uh, not Maybe that. Hatsu would be the only one, since that's the only one where we had the same set of Ozeki in the Basho after. So I'm maybe Hatsu, thinking, the, Hatsu, there weren't any Kadoban. Through the course but, of the year, we've had at least one Kadoban. We've, we've had three Ozeki demotions. Yeah, so, that's just it. Yeah. <laughs> And if we had six tournaments, that means we probably had Goedo Kadoban three times. So Ooh, there's yeah. that. 
He has at least one. Everybody has at least one, if not two. But we do have some more potential movement so that we will probably not have the same set of Ozeki as we do for Kyushu for the Hatsu 2020 Basho. So who could be going down? Our first candidate is Takayasu. Jake. Shut your whore mouth. <laughs> Takayasu. Yasser. Takayasu. Yasser. He injured his elbow in Nagoya as we sat and watched that very injury happen. Our from claim the to fame, I suppose. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He did. He was able to stay in the tournament, get his Kachikoshi, and then pull out after that, which is very important because if he didn't get that Kachikoshi, he had to sit out Aki, and so he would have been Sekiwake for Kyushu already. But now he is coming back as a Kadoban Ozeki, so if he does not get a winning record, he will be demoted down to Sekiwake, and training hasn't looked the greatest for him. Flarek, I think you did a little it, bit of research on that. I did. Uh, it's not looking too good. He recently trained with uh, Arizo, who is apparently still doing sumo with Takayasu. Yeah, still. yeah, he's still coach, like assistant coaching at that mm-hmm. at that Heia. Exactly. Right uh, before and, come back. Yeah. Unprecedented. <laughs> <laughs> friend of the he's show, Ariso. He's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Max Wright, Flair. Friend, friend of, of the show, Ariso. Right, you are Mac. Good Thank call. You. <laughs> and so I uh, apparently did three b- bouts in a row of where Takayasu was uh, winning. <laughs> uh, but then he had like a face of pain, and then like he, the next bout, he was easy lost without power, and like he finished training like right there. So it's not looking good. It's not looking very good for Taki Taki Takiyasu. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I saw some training reports from Sumo Follower on Twitter and everything she was saying is he just looked like he was in pain every time he had to use the left arm and he was trying to avoid it as much as possible. Did get a quote from Takayasu from about a week ago where he said, I can't get power through that arm yet, which is just not a good sign whatsoever. But with the amount of training he's been doing and who he's been going up against, it sounds like all indications are that Takayasu is going to enter the Basho and try to get a Kachikoshi. So I will start with Jake. Ryan, I want you to go learn Japanese and then tell me what that towel says that's hanging on my wall. Uh, It says Takayasu, I believe, if they did not lie to you when they sold it. I sure hope it says Takayasu. Uh also learn Japanese and tell me, what does it say on that Tegata on my wall? Uh, probably Takayasu. Yeah, it's also Takayasu. <laughs> the Tegata is just a handprint. Well, yeah, but it's got the name on it, too. Yeah. yeah. T- Never mind. Continue. You're looking at it. You you can tell this. Yes, but the Tegata is <laughs> a handprint. Uh, I think that he can do this. What he needs to do is, as an Ozeki, his schedule is going to be much weaker in the first week. I think he needs to enter the Basho, at the very least, power through some of those easier matchups, and if it's if it's not working out for him, he can take some time off. And if other high ranking guys pull out, that means he could potentially come back at the end of the tournament and pick up some more easier wins. I am I know I'm stretching. I'm looking for every possible way that this could possibly work <laughs> out for my favorite wrestler. Uh, and I'm going to take a, I'm, you know I'm going to stall a little bit here to come out with my opinion that yes he's the greatest ever and is going to maintain <laughs> Ozeki. Uh before we go we'll on take. to the <laughs> other guys opinions Jake what would No no we're good. <laughs> <laughs> what would you think if he like came back early on and then just reaggravated that injury whereas if he sat out this basho allow it more time to heal come back strong get his 10 wins in Hatsu and he could do that route, or maybe he re-injures himself this time, and then he doesn't have enough strength in Hatsu to get to the 10 wins, and then he's got to start the whole thing over I, again. You bring a really good point up that no one should ever do sumo wrestling. <laughs> 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 That's very fair. Yeah, all right, it's just all right. the worst on the body. It is the worst thing that you could do. If, you, if you're ever concerned about safety, do not do sumo. <laughs> just do not do the sumo. <laughs> No, I, I think he needs to try. Um, I mean, it's no matter what, if he doesn't try this time, it's going to be harder to get that rank back. Um, but it, it's you, we can't necessarily say that every time somebody's injured that they should just stay on the bench. Um, and this is one of those situations where it may be worth a bit of risk to try. Uh, to He's maintain not as young rank. as Takakesho to go that same route. Either. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he Takakesho has the benefit of time. Even if it didn't work out that particular time, I would still probably pick him to get Ozeki back someday. But Takayasu's a little older, doesn't have that that luxury of knowing that he's got more, you know, many more years to go. Yeah. I don't know. I think he needs to try. I I'm I guess in the camp of that he shouldn't. Uh, as I'm always, you, I Flick. think uh, if if someone's injured, you know, take time off. Everything I'm kind of hearing is like it's not ready. I think they're, and he's had so many bashos where he easily kind of gets a junior show. 
like getting back to getting back to Ozeki or getting ten wins in Hatsu, I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue for him. I just say if it's not ready, take time time off, and then have the next boss will be the one you have to risk it and kind of go through it and try to get wins. Especially with his opening uh, charge with that Tachiya charge that he does, he throws his shoulders forward. Other Rikshi are going to start targeting that, and if he still can't get enough power through that arm, that can still that can re-injure it. They can totally take advantage of him. I think he needs to take a page from Takakesho's original book, even though he didn't want to sit out. His Oyakata made him do it, and then he came back in the last Basho and did well. Got same the with show. exactly, and then with mm-hmm. same with Hakuho. Hakuho took that time. Granted, he's a Yokozuna, but he still took that time off to heal, and he came back guns blazing. Well, and kind now of. he went oh two and thirteen in the last one. Well, so, kind of. He still wasn't ready just yet. <laughs> That's but he's because a Yokozuna, the power of so. Hokuto Fuji broke the Yokozuna's oh, shut finger. Up. Oh, get off. <laughs> now I I think we have to go with the premise that Takeyasu is going to enter the Basho as all the signs point to that happening, and I I think he finds a way, and I think as soon as he grabs that eight, he's gone. As long as it's not a day fifteen <laughs> Kachi Koshi. Yeah. yeah. Uh but I I probably put it at like sixty no, I'll put it fifty percent chance Kachi Koshi and then like wow. twenty five twenty five on Make Koshi just straight up fighting the whole tournament or Make Koshi pulling out due to re injury. This sounds like a bet. I, I like your. I'm. I'm not going to put money on it. He's, <laughs> he's my favorite guy, but that doesn't change. Listen, that, that sounds uh, like a bet to me. I, I. I think the ratio there. I would agree with, but I. I do think that his chances of success are higher. I think there's enough reasonable matchups for him that he can probably pull out eight if he picks and chooses carefully. You're. Be, you're, you're crazy. Due to how the Bonds case shook out, there's actually fewer Maigashira he's going up against. Yeah, I mean, there's fewer of them, but it's the same dudes. <laughs> it is. It is the same dudes, but, but they have the Komosubi buff. Yes. You know? Yeah. I mean, these are all dudes that had a winning record last time going up against the full Sanyaku schedule. So that there's very few walkover wins like May say and Takara Fuji <laughs> and Daisho. Well, eh. I think even eh. Mio Kiryu has shown enough gumption in the God. past year that that's yeah. not an easy out anymore. Let me let me stop looking at the Bonsuke for a second <laughs> and say, yes, there's at least eight. Even Daisho is a hard out yeah. or Takara Fuji. Uh, another point Dr. is Fuji's easy. Another point. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! I like it. Don't bring that weak crap into this podcast. Oi. <laughs> another point is like everyone at the top of the bonds are they're they're like top athletes and like really really obviously really good at sumo. But like the, his uh, Takayasu's uh, injury is very public, so I think they are smart enough to actually take advantage of this. Even though like normally they it, something that Takayasu would normally beat. I think they might be able to do some, like, watching some tape, have a strategy against them that can take them down. And Takayasu's main weapon recently has been that left-hand grip, and that's gone now mm-hmm. with this elbow injury. He's got to find new ways to fight, and maybe he can perfect those new ways in two months and that, be that to his advantage. People don't know what he's <laughs> going to do. Yeah. Or probably more likely the exact opposite of that. <laughs> you should hanka every single time. Ooh, yes, you have that it. is true. But, I mean, to his credit, he did get a win with the full injured arm just like a day or two after he got the injury. So maybe mm-hmm. he can shuffle his way to eight, four months after the fact. Yeah, it's possible, but I think you said like 50, 50% that he's going to get Kachi Koshi. 50% Kachi that he's gonna Koshi. Kachi? I think yeah. that's insane. Maybe like 20. 20% Kachi? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's Flerick, I want you to go and learn <laughs> Japanese <laughs> okay. and tell me what that towel on my wall says. I think it says uh, Taki, Takiyasu. Talk, my talk, yes, yes, I'm still working on my get, pronunciation. He's going to get that kachikoshi is what the full text reads. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on to, for once, we have more candidates to move up to the Ozeki rank than fall from the Ozeki rank. Huh. As Mitaki at, Yumi? We'll get to Mitaki Yumi, Ooh. but first, let's talk about the former two-time Ozeki, Tochi Noshin, Aww. who has been demoted once again. Uh, he's always hurt, whether it's his knee, <laughs> his shoulder, his toe, his other knee, his his <laughs> ego. The list goes on and on. His spleen <laughs> for Tochi Noshin's injuries. But he went 0-6-9 in the Nagoya Basho. He came in hurt and did not end well for him there. And then he followed that up with a 6-9 record in Aki, so that's two back-to-back uh, losing records for Tochi Noshin, dropping him down to the Sekiwake rank, where he has the chance to get 10 wins and return to Ozeki for the third time. <laughs> and so he would join Tochi Azuma as the only Rikshi ever to return to the Ozeki rank twice, 
And it sounds like training's going pretty well for Tochi Noshin. Uh, he said that it's the best that he's felt in a while. So will he be Ozeki for the third time in Hatsu? <laughs> three time, three time, three time. No, I don't think he's going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> any, any more in-depth conversation on that? Uh no, move on. Let me think of an actual point and not just a joke. <laughs> All right, Flarek. <laughs> I, I I believe. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is the top notch Tochi Noshin and analysis. <laughs> Everybody has come it, to this podcast. It's so for. hard to say. I I will say, like you said, uh, he, he's like doing pretty well in training. Is what I'm reading. I think I saw like a one and nine. I, nine and one gets Mitaki Yumi. Granted, Mitaki Yumi. <laughs> Mitaki Yumi is ass at training. <laughs> exactly. It's hard to kind of say that, but it's. He like did he pretty said, well against Asanoyama and some other uh, t- guys at the top yeah. of the Bonske. I, I will say it's promising hearing that, and my hype is like raising a little bit, kind of saying <gasps> maybe it could happen. But, but you've like, been hurt before. I've been hurt before. So it's kind of... <laughs> Kisa no Sato. I, I can see it happening. Why? I think it's a possibility, I would say. I'm not going to completely uh, rule them out like last Basha where we're like, yeah, no way. Yeah. G- give us some odds. <laughs> are, are we thinking like it's uh it's like a 50 50 ish are you thinking he's got like a 10 percent chance to get it it's 10 wins right yep. yeah okay i will go 60 percent a little over 50 50 i i think i'm right at 50 50 i'll, I'll go 51 49 <laughs> <laughs> that okay. he will get it because that entirely a heart speaking yeah, it's mostly heart but i really do like his quote because i think he's pretty honest with how his injuries are and like if he's not feeling good he's like yeah no my right leg hurts i'm just gonna go in there and try to do my thing but he's saying he's feeling the best that he's felt in a while so i think that's pretty promising from tochi noshin and we all know a tochi noshin that feels good can be dominant on the mm-hmm. dohyo i am kind of worried about guys like mitaki yumi hokuto fuji asanoyama they're kind of coming into their own at the top of the bonske and they could present a bigger challenge there might be more challenges at the top for Tochi Noshin than there has been in the past, but I, I damn it, I talked myself into it. Seventy-five percent. No, that is that is far too much. Sixty. Too late. Sixty. I think Flarek was right on that number. Sixty percent chance for ten wins. Yep, I did the math, and that's where it came out to. <laughs> well, uh, I did the math, and for Takayasu to take this, I mean, that means oh, I yeah, only oh, have stop it. That means I only have several other percent to give out to everyone else. <laughs> so, what is your take on Goedo? Uh, Moving on. How does this relate to Takayasu? <laughs> he has see. to face him. <laughs> that is true. No, I think Tochi, I'm going to say 60% as well. Heck yeah. I think with how he's feeling, like you said, Ryan, he's always honest. He's up front. We haven't seen a any indications or news outlets that he's given a Yelp in training. Yeah, it's which... always like the week before the Basho <laughs> starts. Right. Like, oh, no, his legs hurt again. Oh, no, his shoulder is hurt. Like every single week before the Basho. We haven't gotten that yet. Nope. This is the exact pick that we ne- that we discussed that is going to go QGO between recording and releasing. <laughs> this, Most this is, likely. It is now a guarantee. <laughs> go to no. Twitter tomorrow Good morning. Yep, there was the Yelp in oh. training. He is he is Etai this time. Would you oh, look at that? I, I actually already, I'm checking Twitter right now. <laughs> no, 60-40. I give him sixty forty odds. I'm a little bit more pessimistic. Unrelated to Takayasu, I think that <laughs> I, I don't think he can. I, I, I just think it's too much to to happen a third time. I'm I'm going to say like forty percent, forty sixty instead. Okay. Shame on you. Yeah, sixty is clearly the strong number here. I, I can live with this. <laughs> <laughs> so, as Mac alluded to earlier, we also have Mitaki Yumi has an outside shot of being promoted to Ozeki. He had nine wins in the Nagoya Basho. Not very impressive, but he followed that up with a 12-3 and record in Aki and a win in a playoff over Takakesho. That gives him 21 wins over the past two Basho, which means that he is 12 wins away from the mythical 33 wins in three Basho number, and you get your Ozeki promotion. And a myth it is. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, the playoffs got to count, right? No. That was a win in a Basho. I, I mean, <laughs> we have no idea. We, yeah. no. <laughs> we are not on that association. Uh, we don't Honestly, know. like, a, as much as that sentence started as a joke, when I was halfway through, I realized that having that you show via the playoff win probably counts for something. Mm-hmm. Like, if he, if he got, like, 11 wins, but that was still, you know, 11 really good wins or something like that, I think he'd still be, you know... Yeah, up for it. It's another bout with a quality opponent and like the pressure was on, you know, mm-hmm. winning important matches is very Ozeki. What if he had been in a three way playoff at Tomoe Sen and it just like kept going over and over again? He like won one, lost one, won one, lost one. And then he got like 33 straight in the Tomoe Sen. 
I think would that, he be Ozeki already? Guys, I, I have an idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the math checks out. They have to promote That's him. Clearly, clearly. Yeah. Uh, so what do we think Mitaki Yumi will do to follow up his second career you show? Do we think that he is going to stay strong and fight hard and get to his Ozeki promotion or at least keep the Ozeki run alive with double digit wins? Or do we think he's going to falter like he did after his last you show in Nagoya of last year? We'll start with Mac. I think he's going to falter. As much as that hurt me to say, I think he's he's still got the jitter. Something is going on in his brain where it looks like he's going to do really well, and then it just like it just falls apart for him. I did see something on Twitter where he was quoted saying that it's hard for him to keep himself in shape when it gets cold, and it is officially cold. Oh no! <laughs> okay, <laughs> how cold is it in Japan right now? Probably, I mean, probably not as cold as it is here now because it's freaking cold. But. It's, it's in Kyushu, which is uh, more south. Oh, maybe. So, so maybe he'll do well. It's cold like 70 degrees. <laughs> I don't think it's 70 degrees. There's somebody look if up only the we weather have in some Japan. way to do this. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's what he said <laughs> leading Kyushu. up to this tournament. Regardless, it's Northern Hemisphere. It's the cold half of the year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah fair enough. <laughs> yeah, we get it. <laughs> it's not like he's training outside. The stables yeah. are all enclosed. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, 57 right now. Oh, excuse like me. High of 60 or so. Okay, so, so that's, like, that's, that's, only, okay. that's only like 10 degrees warmer than here. But yeah, he is 15. setting the table for a falter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe he's doing what he doesn't. Maybe he's doing the same thing as his like ass training record. Yeah, I was going to say, like, and as Flair alluded to, his training has been pretty ass so far. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I mean. <laughs> ass. It, makes, it looks like he's going to do well. He sets it all up where it's, he could really bust out and become an Ozeki, but he just psychs himself out. We've seen this happen in the past. Yeah, I do think he is kind of in his head about these things. I, I think that um, this is another one similar to uh, Takayasu. I think it's one where he's got to hope for some of the other tough matchups to be injured. Every time he's had a big tournament, it's been when the top of the field is just crushed. So I think he's probably going to do great, uh, you know, first week, like uh, like usual, uh, and then run into run into some roadblocks unless there's some key key injuries. I mean, nothing would make me happier to see him get to the Ozeki rank. Same to with, see other with, people get injured. What? Yeah, yeah. No, I know you, Mac. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oddly enough, yes, you got me. But no, just look how amazing it was when we saw Tochi Notion do it, see Takakesho do it, and then mm-hmm. Takayasu. It's it's an amazing feat. So anybody that breaches that barrier is phenomenal. I Except love, for Goedo. I love me some Ozeki Well, we didn't runs. see his rise, so That's we're true. okay with it that. It was probably as mediocre as Goedo is. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love me some Ozeki run, so I'm with you on that, Matt. Exactly. I would love to kind of see him. Maybe not quite get it this time, but just like Ooh, maybe a 10 Setting win. up? Yeah, like setting up for like a hot Anime pro tag? Of one that's like really cool. Yeah, I just want the best like storyline that we can possibly All right, Flair, yes. since you nailed the 60% odds last time, <laughs> I want you to Jeez. break down the odds of Mitaki Yumi getting enough wins this time for the Ozeki promotion versus getting enough wins to keep the Ozeki run going where he could get it in Hatsu versus him just losing completely and destroying his Ozeki run. Okay, so he needs tw- uh, 12 to potentially get the... Uh, yes. Yeah, to hit the, 33. Hit he 33. Needs 12. Yeah. Okay, and I stopped listening to your question after I <laughs> thought about that map. He tuned you so out. So you want to, like, the, the chances that he's going to either get it get this it, time, get it like, next time, next time, or just completely ruin it. Crap the bed. Show. So he has to get at least 10, and then, what, 12? I... You know, let, let me let me correct some numbers. Sixty uh, percent. <laughs> oh, oh my! For what? Uh, yep. <laughs> yes, <laughs> nailed it. Uh, it's it's tough. I actually he does have a really good shot because I think he's coming off a win, so he's obviously in really good shape. He's uh, it's getting a little colder, so maybe it's a little bit more down. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just kind of seeing a bunch of things. I <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to say. I think he can easily. Pro- I think he's contender to get ten wins as Basho at the least. If he gets a couple of lucky matchups like Jack, uh, Jake with Jack was saying, Jake, <laughs> Jake with Jack, <laughs> that he was saying, I think he can get the twelve. I think he can easily get the ten. If he gets some luck, he can get uh, go on for it. I think sixty percent that whether he actually gets it, he stays on the Ozeki pace. Okay, and then maybe fifty percent that he actually gets it. One hundred and ten percent. I'm going to give Ryan the cow. numbers that he's looking for here. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> and I'm going to say seven percent because I think it's going yeah. Saki awesome. <laughs> Yeah, no, I had to do some calculation. I'm glad you took a while there. Um, no, I think 25% chance Ozeki right away. Okay. 50% chance he gets between 9 and 11 wins and stays in the hunt for next time. And then 25% chance that it's just a crushing 
terrible Ozeki run over kind of thing. I think I like that. I like that. And those added up to a hundred (laughs) flare. I think I would go sixty percent that he keeps it going, and then down to fifty fifteen percent that he craps the bed. No, where's the hundred and ten? Come on. Sorry. Fine. We'll go. (laughs) We'll do sixty percent that he keeps it going, doesn't get it this time, and then we'll keep the twenty five percent (laughs) that he completely craps the bed to get to hundred and ten percent. There you go. Are we all happy now? I am very happy. All right, so sounds like none of us fully <laughs> believe he is going to get the Ozeki promotion after this, Basho, but I think we're pretty all on board that he's going to do good enough to keep the Ozeki run going. The, mm. my, my Takayasu calculations are falling apart. <laughs> Jake, what does that towel on your wall say? Learn Japanese and tell me. You're, you're damn right, Mac. <laughs> you're damn right. Thank you. I think we just talked Jake into a Takayasu you show. Keep it going, and you may. <laughs> Jake, learn Japanese and tell me what that they got on the wall that is, says. That is my joke, you guys, and it was funny once when Mac did it. <laughs> moving on. Uh, moving on to a new, again, Ozeki <laughs> and Takakeisho. Like we said, it's been a very tumultuous uh, Ozeki landscape this year. Takakeisho, Ozeki for the second time this year. Uh, he is coming off a pec injury that he sustained against Mitaki Yumi in that playoff match that they had for the U show. He has been training against Sekitori and other guys in his stable. It was kind of on and off uh, about a week ago. He was going against uh, Sekitori. Seemed like he was doing pretty good. The next day, something didn't feel right in his pec, and he kind of held off for training. He's been working his way back into the training past couple of days. He's been doing pretty well. He's been winning the majority of his matches up against Sekitori, so it's not like he's just facing guys Makushta and below. How do we think Takakeisho is going to do coming back from that injury? He was dealing with a pain bow. Seriously, his pec was <laughs> so many different colors. Every time he would move, it'd be like, ow, 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 that has to hurt. That did look very nasty. Ugh. I thought it was pretty cool looking. (laughs) Probably hurt, but... But I think he's going to do okay. I'm actually pegging him to do well for this, Basho. I think he is lucky that he's got the chance to go Kadoban again. I'm not not optimistic on him either. Really? Um, But that cushion is there, you know, so if he does have a losing record, he's, you know, he keeps his rank, but I don't know. I I think I'm I'm a little bit more optimistic for Takakesho than Tochi Notion. But obviously nowhere near as optimistic as I am for Takayasu, who's going to win everything forever. <laughs> obviously, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I'm hopeful. I think he might. Uh, I, I expect a Goela special. special. Like he does really well in the beginning and then barely gets uh, Kachikoshi sure. right at the end. I, I, I think I have most confidence in Takakesho out of any of the Ozeki. Ooh. And I trust his Oyakata to know mm. when Takakesho is healthy enough to enter the Basho, as we've seen his Oyakata hold him out when it cost him his Ozeki rank. So the fact that his Oyakato is pretty... Oyakato? Domo Oyakato, <laughs> Mr. Roboto. Um, <laughs> Good recovery. <laughs> well done. Yeah. The fact that his Oyakata, Chigano Ura, is so gung-ho about him entering the tournament and thinks he's going to do fine, that gives me all the confidence that I need that Takakesho is going to do just fine to probably even get to 10 plus wins because Agreed. what we've Ooh. seen from Takakesho over the past years, if he's healthy, he's 10 wins minimum, mm-hmm. yeah. which is what you expect from an Hoseki. Someday we're going to see that again. I don't know when, <laughs> but someday that's what we're going to expect from Ozeki. Basho in and Basho out. Yeah. I like that take. I, I think I could easily see him kind of gain uh, the 10 wins, just kind of be, or just sneakily just like get an entire Yusho at the same time. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, I think he's always a dark horse Yusho candidate at this point. I mean, yeah. he almost took it last time. I, I know. It's that, that, that kind of is the thing that I can't put, I can't put uh, Takakesho out. Because the last time I pretty much completely writ, uh, written him off because like he was he was just so injured coming into it, so yeah I think we all uh, just kind of overestimated I guess how much his injury would affect him last time because I think we were all pretty down on Takakesha last oh, yeah. time and he mm-hmm. he proved us all wrong and I guess he hasn't converted Jake yet so he's going to have to prove Jake wrong all over again. I I said I wasn't super optimistic, but I <laughs> I, I, I I'm not expecting like. I'm not expecting 10 wins the way that you guys are talking about, but I, I think he's going to be okay. Um, and I, I, I guess 
I'm going to hedge my bet here and say a little bit that I, I wouldn't be shocked if he blew it, blew this tournament out of the water, <laughs> but I'm just not expecting it. So either Kababan and Aryusho is what I'm hearing from I, Yes, he could <laughs> have somewhere between 0 and 15 wins. <laughs> <laughs> Very astute analysis. Uh, I did go back to check just, to, just out of curiosity here, and yeah, nobody picked him for anything. Uh, in the last Basho for the our, prediction series, in our nope. prediction series, yeah. So yeah, we were definitely very down on him then. Yeah, uh, who snuck in this note about Goedo in the outline? I specifically left him off. He is literally top five in the world <laughs> at the sport. We have to have him on the outline. Okay, he, fine. He got he got ten wins last time. I don't remember any of them, <laughs> but I'm sure some of them were pretty good. <laughs> no, uh, he beat Takakesho. That's a big one. He, oh, geez, he didn't, oh, yeah, because he was an Ozeki and both Yokozuna pulled out, he didn't have any, he didn't have any Yokozuna matches. But he did beat Tochi Notion, which was not a gigantic feat last time. No. Um, either way, I think that he's in prime position to just kind of coast, as he has been known to. Um, but Eight, it, seven, nine, and six. Move yeah, on. but at the same time, I, he's, I, I would put him in a similar situation as Mitaki Yumi, mm-hmm. where I think one or two key pullouts, and he's just in that Jun Yusho race. That's fair. Let's move on to... <laughs> hey, the- I got something out of you. Okay, <laughs> hey, that's fine. Yeah. I consider that a win. <laughs> Let's move on to the top two guys in the world. We got Hakuho coming back strong. He is back training. He sounds like he's dominating everybody he's going up against. He's trained against the likes of Abi, Hokuto Fuji, Tomokaze, and the only guys that have put dirt on Hakuho in training are Hokuto Fuji and Tomokaze. Notably absent from that list, Flerick is Abi. <gasps> don't you talk shit about Abi. Uh, he, he's it's too late. Abi <laughs> won his first match ever against Hakuho, and just, yeah. that's good. <laughs> I'm I fine. Mean, just For like most Aurora. People, that's, yeah, that's exactly. a yeah, yeah, yeah. Aurora, clearly. <laughs> One match, best player against Hakuho. That's yeah. right. Aurora better than Hakuho. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hot take, Mac. Abi's schedule was full, so like Hakuho tried <laughs> to schedule a match, but he's like, I- I'm sorry, I got all the stuff going on. No, they on. had matches against each other. Abi just didn't win any of them. He, because he was busy uh, doing other things. I, I, exactly. He's training. He's training. I got nothing for you right there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to w- watch the next episode to figure out what happened. Okay. We'll, we'll get to some more Abi news later and what might have been on his mind during those, uh, uh, those training matches against Hakuho. But it does sound like Hakuho is back from the injury that took him out of Aki. What are our expectations of Hakuho? He has returned from the Fortress of Solitude. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think with this news, I got to say I'm pretty high on Hakuho. Oh, yeah. I mean, when aren't you? If Hakuho, if you know Hakuho's in, you're just going to be he's breathing in and healthy. <laughs> yeah, he's breathing and he has yet to go Kyujo. So Correct. I think he has got to be like, you know, top three candidates for the Yusho at this point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Percentage wise, Hakuho wins the Yusho. How do you go any lower than 99.9%? <laughs> um, I would. You, I, what do you guys by think? By rounding I, I up with Kakuryu. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to go 99, <laughs> but 98. <laughs> 98's looking pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I, he's the obvious favorite. Like, mm-hmm. he's like he's so good if he's healthy. Like, he just had, like, a I think a broken finger, finger last time. I believe so, yeah. I feel like that can heal in actually probably two weeks. Tape it up. Tape it next to the other finger. You're good to go. Yeah, so I, I'm pretty high on him. I think he's has a really good chance. Nope, right there with you. At that point, his slaps have just become that much more devastating. The bones <laughs> all fuse into one solid mass in his hand. KO. Into Instant some Kodo KO. Yuki flippers. Right, uh-huh. exactly. He's, he's playing the long game for his late career where he needs to come up with more devious tactics to win. <laughs> wham, wham, wham. I'm like, oh, wow, look at that fast go. Since as a robot, I only communicate in numbers, um, I'm going to say that at like 40% Hakuho, 30% Kakuryu, just because I haven't heard any bad news about him, and then 30% the field. I don't know. I, th- I think okay. that's about as low as I can go on Hakuho when we have this promising of news going in. Yeah, I, I heard the uh, Kakuryu put in the groundwork that his like, knee is still maybe a little, little iffy. Oh, he's dropping excuses already? He's already dropping okay. excuses. He's done. He's done. Uh, but he's still going to enter, is what he said, because I think he's been Kyushu the last like three or two. Maybe. Yeah, he hasn't shown up for a Kyushu in a while. Yeah, so yeah I, since last year. So I think he's going to really uh, try yeah. to tough it out. <laughs> Yeah. Well, no, he had a he had a quote Two, that he, he hasn't been to Kyushu in a while. So yeah, Jake, if you look at that, oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. He's missed at least the last two Kyushu. The last time he finished one was at the end of 2016 <laughs> when he won it. Yeah, so yeah. okay, I thought we were making a different joke, but I'm good. I'm good with this joke <laughs> so, too. I, I guess uh, to to bring bring it back, I I feel Hakuho a little bit more than Kakuryu. Yeah, it, for Kakuryu, he Maybe. has begun training at his new stable, the Michinoku Beya, uh, as oh, he. Yeah. 
as he is now with them after Izutsu Oyakata passed away between the tournaments. Uh, he One day of training that I saw is he took on Yutakayama 15 times and won them all. But since he... <laughs> Since Flarek says he's already laying the groundwork that, hey, my knee's kind of he bothering did. me a little bit, that's really setting up like two or three Kinboshi in the first week and him pulling out. It's possible, yeah. But I would say Kakuyu, he's a smart smart cookie. Uh, he is a smart sumatori. He, he actually, I would not put past him to actually being putting on some false kind of uh, leads to saying like, oh, no, I'm more injured than I actually am. I feel like we're in kind of like a, a princess bride situation where like we're overthinking so hard that it oh, actually yeah. means nothing to us. <laughs> <laughs> Inconceivable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ultimately, I, I, I can I can believe in the cock a little bit more. <laughs> I like him. I give him twenty percent. Twenty percent odds he wins. Oh, okay. Seventy percent Hakuho, ten like, percent Dark Horse. At this rate, I think we could actually just turn our podcast into a spreadsheet of odds. <laughs> I, that's what you've been pushing for from the very beginning, and it's working <laughs> <laughs> slowly. The influence. I don't know. I almost put the odds at Dark Horse slightly over Kakuryu at this point. If you look really? at the num- if you look at the numbers over the past year, we've had more Dark Horse wins than Kakuryu wins. So, I mean, if you put Tamawashi, Asanoyama, Tochi oh, yeah, Noshi, Tamawashi. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Who? <laughs> yeah, yep. if you like add all those together, I'm pretty sure that adds up to more uh, U shows than Kakuryu U shows over the past year. So, or it might be just like very even. So, I yeah, if we're gonna put actual odds on it, which apparently this is the episode of just putting odds on everything, <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm gonna give Hakuho 65 because chance of re-injury really scares me, and then we're gonna split the uh, other remaining 35 percent evenly, 17 and a half percent for. Uh, the field Ooh. and Ooh, three sig digs, nice, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and seventeen and a half percent for Kakuryu. Those are the official that, odds. That's really getting me going. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to these others, jokers. Those are the official odds for this Ba show. So, as we kind of alluded to earlier, we have a crowded Como Subi rank for the first time since the far off year of two thousand and six, when Roho and Amanishki made their mark as. Uh, Komosubi to east and to west. We have four Komosubi. Hokuto Fuji and Asanoyama are joining the Komosubi ranks behind Abi and Endo. There was nobody in the Sanyaku schedule that had a losing record, so nobody could drop down. Hokuto Fuji had a 9 and 6 record from the top Maegashira spot, and Asanoyama had a 10 and 5 record from Maegashira 2. The Bonsge committee, committee decided that those were good enough records at that rank to warrant a jump into the Komosubi rank. And so they get pay and salary, but they're still in the same exact position they were last <laughs> Pasho, really. We talked about this quite a bit on the Bonsge review episode that you and I did, but it means almost dick. <laughs> it, I think the only thing it means is a pay raise and a nice title before you're done. Yeah, yeah. And now Asanoyama can say, yeah, I was in the Sanyaku ranks that one time. Exactly. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. more than that one time. Yeah, you know sure, what I mean. Hopefully. Pretty yeah. sure it's going to be an uh, well, extended stay for Asanoyama. Yeah. Maybe not this time, but I think eventually. But like if he tear no Fuji's tomorrow or something, you know, he can still say that he, he was in the Sanyaku ranks. Don't sleep on Terra no Fuji. Mm-hmm. Sanyaku is in his future. I believe. Uh, you believe? I believe. Ooh. But basically what this <laughs> means, though, is that having them in the exact same order as they were going to be regardless, but calling them Komasubi, it basically makes everyone else's rank look one better than it really is. Yes. <laughs> because really, Hokuto Fuji is still uh, Magashira 1 East, pretty much. He didn't move from that order in the rank from last time. Right. We're, we're getting way yeah. too in the, the weeds the in the schedule. Bonske. That, that, that yeah. was a conversation we already had. At length. At length. So, Mac and Flarek, I know you guys haven't heard that conversation. Not at, at all. Not no, at, because no you least. never listen nope. to our podcast, Heck you no. ungrateful little turds. <laughs> uh, we get enough of you doing these. Why the hell would I want to listen You're to right. you You're right. This is this is a big enough dose <laughs> exactly. for sure. So I won't have you guys weigh in on the Bonds K at all. I know that's way above your pay grade. Um, Second rate podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> but which which of the four right Komosubi you do you think is going to have the best record in this Basho? Which of the four? Yes. Oh. Asanoyama. And why is that, Mr. Mac? Because Hokuto Fuji sucks. Whoa! Whoa! (laughs) Whoa, let's pump the brakes on this train. This guy... No, I think we're good. 
Mac, you need to learn Japanese and look what it, <laughs> see what it says on Ryan's shirt. He's not wearing anything. No, but it would have been nothing at all. Nothing at all. But this is a podcast, and he could have gotten away with it if he didn't just call him out right there. So well, whatever. it wouldn't be me if I didn't call him out. Anyway, <laughs> I got the reaction I wanted. No, with Abi looking it. at all of the different people that are around him and knowing his style, he, as much as I love his Oshi Sumo, I love seeing his pusher thrust. He's going to overextend. A lot of these guys are going to barrel into him. I don't see him getting, maybe he can get eight, but still not all too confident of getting too much higher. Ando, I just don't have a good feeling about him for this going into this one. I can't explain why, but I'm just not feeling Endo this one. But Asanoyama, I think he's on a rise. And Hogoda Fuji is Hogoda Fuji. He'll maybe do seven and eight. He'll stop his feet. <laughs> Yeah, he'll stop his feet and do his thing. He mm. literally got nine and six record from the same exact position last time. He beat Hakuho before Hakuho was hurt. Yeah, yes. but he's a Komasubi now, he's so he's got a much now. harder schedule. Mm-hmm. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to get a seven and eight or better. Or All right, worse. Flair, excuse me. Come in here with a less trash take than Mac. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, it's probably going to be mostly the same. Uh, go Asanaga Thank you. And, uh, screw Hokuto Fuji. <laughs> he's <laughs> trash. <laughs> I, I feel like. There's a very specific reason you guys are doing this, and it's to get a rise out of me. Very and I will no that. longer allow you to do that. Right, right. Uh, you, Please you stop definitely. raising your voice. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if I can. <laughs> but no, uh, Asuno Yama, of them, he's, uh, he has the most proven results between them. So it's, I think we can't actually say that he's, he's the only one with the Yusho to his name. that exactly. was the other point I was going to make. So I think, of, obviously, of all of them, he's kind of the most promising, and I expect to see some good things from the future from him, along with Gold and the protagonist, Oppie. But... <laughs> He doesn't have Instagram anymore, so we'll see how that goes. What? I, we'll get to why he doesn't have Instagram anymore. Oh, dear. Too is many this, women. Is this juicy? <laughs> uh, a little bit. Yeah. Ooh, cool. I don't know this one. We'll uh, get to that later in the uh, news. I am going to agree with Asano Yama, but I do think Hokuto Fuji uh, sucks. Um, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> He's hot garbage. He's Thank awful. Thank you. I think that, that all these guys um, are in a decent position to, to stay near the top here. Endo, I'm not really sold on just because he's less consistent, I guess, um, in recent times. Uh, and Asano Yama, I am dangerously close to just removing the brakes altogether from the high <laughs> So I don't know where that one's going to go, but mm-hmm. uh, if he wins, like, he's going to have his toughest matches right at the beginning here. So right. if he comes out of the first week at like 50, 50 or better, I think that he's going to basically win almost the whole second week. Don't yeah. even need that. Hokuto Fuji came out the first week, one and six and ended up nine and six. That is true. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, you know, proof of concept right there, but yeah, but I, so tell us why Hokuto Fuji is going mm-hmm. to be the best. And that's why you set up this question. No, I am 100% with you guys. Asano Yama. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think a hundred percent with us on the whole take. Yep. Not on the whole take. No, <laughs> just that Asanoyama, I think, is probably going to do the best out of the Komosubi. I think Hokuto Fuji gets the nerves a lot. Uh, I think last time he was in the Sanyaku ranks, you could kind of tell his sumo was off, especially that first week. He really struggled out of the gates the last time he was Komosubi. And I think some stuff that I saw on Twitter and his social media was kind of leaning towards the fact that he wasn't the most comfortable leading up to that Basho. He, he turned it around and got a seven and eight in the second week, but I think he's probably going to deal with some of that. And so I think at best like eight and seven, but I think Asanoyama has a potential for double digits and Abi has yet to get a legit winning record as Como Subi. <laughs> so I'm waiting to see that before I buy into him. <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah, I, I was kind of thinking, uh, since you bring that up about Hokuto Fuji, do you think he's just somebody that would rather be the underdog? You think that's it's a uh, mental thing? I think he just needs time to adjust to it. So maybe this is as his second go round in the Sanyaku ranks. Maybe he's gotten over the hurdle of, okay, this is my first time. Like, oh, God, I hope I do really good. He's past that now. It's a second time. So maybe he does better. But yeah, I do think he's another guy kind of like Mitaki Yumi that kind of gets in his own head a little bit. Which is why I said seven and eight. Look at his record. Look at his past record there. He'll have a really good couple basho and then he'll go seven and eight. Then he'll bust out another one. And then do crap. No, I, I think seven and eight is one hundred percent within the well, realm of possibility. He's been at the top two Maigashira ranks or Komosubi ranks for the past year, and he's either had a nine and six record or a seven and eight record. <laughs> Which is oh, why wow, I went that with is se- that's why I went with seven and eight. That is uncanny. <laughs> it's actually so his past like eight records. I think nine and six, nine and six, seven and eight, seven and eight, nine and six, seven and eight, se- nine and six. So past seven records, <laughs> and the one before that he did really well from the absolute rock bottom of the division yeah (laughs) so i think yeah it's either 
Hokuto Fuji, is he going to be 9-6 and six or 7-8? and eight? This time, I might even lean towards 7-8 and eight as he's back in the Sanyaku ranks. Where he has the harder schedule than last mm-hmm. time. Uh, of course, just infinitely <laughs> harder the second you cross that boundary. <laughs> or the boundary crosses you, really, is what happened this time. So, are there any Maegashira that we think are going to be surprising Yusho or Jun Yusho contenders this Basho, much like Okinoumi was last time, or even Tsurugisho was in the game late? Maybe somebody could be like Asanoyama or Tochi Noshin that wins a Yusho from the Maegashira ranks. Who do you think is your top contender for that? I think there is one guy who is literally one slot outside of the joy. And if nobody gets injured, he would not have to face any Yokozuna. And I think he will absolutely mop up if that happens and if that stays the case. Are, are you joining me on the uh, Tomokaze no breaks hype train? I have only one break left. <laughs> <laughs> Similar to Asano Yama. No, I, I think what's, what's most likely to happen here is it, it sounds like everybody is going to be entering the Basho at this point. So if that were to hold for the entire Basho, Tomokaze would just clean up in the, at the beginning, but then obviously they would start tossing him harder matchups as the Basho goes on. Yes. Right. Um, but I think there's, there's a good chance that he gets an easy first week until maybe one or two of the guys above him starts dropping out, and I think he's primed for double digits here. We, we mentioned, we've mentioned in the past that uh, he's, he never had a losing record until this very most recent Basho, where he was in the joy and only had a only had a losing record by one. Yeah, and he got his second career Kimboshi over Kakuryu in that time as he well. He is in an awfully Asanoyama looking slot right now, mm. um, as far as like his progression and his uh, potential. Mac, what about you? Dark Horse Magashira candidate to win the U Show. Tomokaze, choo choo. All right, Flarek. Tomokaze. Uh, no, no, I was just <laughs> responding to that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Flarek just likes saying Tomokaze. Just like it is a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's smooth. I, I don't think any of them are going to be really like have potential. I, I just, I really, I, my top picks would have been Hokuto Fujio Asanoyama from Las Basho, but they're up in the Sanyaku. Uh, I think Tomokase, I think has probably the most potential to at least Kachikoshi against a lot of these matchups in the Sanyaku, but everyone else, I'm just not convinced. So I'm going to say no one hmm. for the sake of lukewarm takes here. Uh, Shodai and Chiu Taryu are at Megashira 10 and 11, respectively, and I think they are primed for a great performance relative to their their position. I, I was thinking the same exact thing, especially about Chiu Taryu. Um, let me throw out another name. Former Yusho winner Tamawashi is in kind of the same position as Tomokaze. Oh, yeah, out, Tamawashi. Outside of the joy, so he's not going to be going up against top tier schedule. He already won a U show with the top tier schedule earlier this year. So, and he's had a kind of like an every other Basho sort of thing that's kind of gone away recently. But maybe it's like two bad ones, two good ones now, and now he'd be on track for having a good one. So, could possibly have a very good tournament out of Tamawashi this time. I think he could be a dark horse candidate for his second career U show. Come on, <laughs> get hyped, Tamawashi people. Yeah. Nah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, one person that we did not bring up as a potential U show candidate, uh, Ichi Nojo at Maegashira uh, 10 or 11, uh, possibly even 12. Yeah, Maegashira 12. And we have the Bonds K back. Bonds so, yes, it, yes. <laughs> it is 12. Uh, but there's a reason why we don't have him in Yes, there. Ichi Nojo sounds like he is going to be Kyujo for this Basho. He's having recurring back issues. And to relieve the burden on his back, he has dropped from 224 kilograms to around 190 kilograms. Dang. I looked this one up because I was curious. That is the weight of an average-sized 11-year-old American child. That he just decided to drop <laughs> in a couple months. Well, sorry, kid. You got to get off. Now. My Bye. back hurts. <laughs> I'm going to lose one 11-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there anybody else, anybody feels a particular need to talk about? We've got Onosho back up in the upper half of the Maegashira ranks. We've got Enho joining him at Maegashira 6 at his career high. Let's get some Enho takes. This, I, might, yeah. this might be it. <laughs> yeah. Sweet baby boy. No. Anytime like, he goes higher than he was last time, it's like, yeah, this, like, this is a fine. No, this, no. this, this might be the, the ceiling. <laughs> Finally, the time where somebody lands on him incorrectly and he just dies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that or like, oh. I mean, he's he's obviously super crafty, but like mm-hmm. there's there's a finite number of like tricks, you know? Yeah. <laughs> mm. So <laughs> I'm thinking like eventually he's going to get, he he tends to get figured out 
later in the Basho. And I don't know, one of these times it's just going to be like day two and everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what we got to do to him this time. I 100% agree. Mm-hmm. I think as the quality of his opponents get up more and more, I think they're going to say, oh, wait, this is how you have to face against Enho. And then they just know right away. And they're just going to be able to take a lot more wins off of him. All right, Jake, how many wins for Enho? Uh, six. Flarek? Uh, five. Mac? Siete. I'm also with Mac at seven, I believe. Yes. <laughs> seven. I'm Siete. pretty sure. Seven. Uh-huh. <laughs> Mac throws out the Spanish on this predominantly Japanese podcast. Si. Eng- English-speaking podcast. What does it say on my wall, Ryan? <laughs> I don't know! <laughs> okay, yeah, so Japanese is out. I do think a couple others to watch. They may not set you know, the Bonsky on fire, but... Yutaka Yama, we've seen him bounce up and down. I wouldn't count him out for you know, being a bum on this wonderful uh, Bonsuke that we're... I've, I'm just floundering at this point. Never mind me. But uh, <laughs> Kota Waiko would be another one that I would also watch. I really enjoy watching his matches. Mm-hmm. Um, I would bring up one other name that I think is going to be utterly destroyed, even worse than Enho. Uh, Meisei making his uh, career high at Megashira 2. Hmm. Uh, coming up from Megashira 10... Uh, with a ten and five record, uh, so he is at his highest rank by far. No, um, he was at Mikeshira four or three a couple times ago. So not by so far. two more is by far. <laughs> but really, it's more like Mikeshira three because we have two extra Komosubi. That's what I was going to bring up. So yeah, it's three ranks higher than Megashira four that time that he was Megashira four. Uh, putting him in the joy, meaning he'll face all of the top the the tippy top guys at the very very bit the the, the best guys that are at <laughs> wrestling doing it. Yeah, um, <laughs> right. You are Jake. Um, the podcasting is hard, and I think and, and that time that he was at Megashira four, four and eleven. Yeah, no, he did. One of those wins was a Fusen. <laughs> I I do think that was a little deceptive. I remember that he was in all of those early matches. He started. He's a fairly six. exciting guy. Usually, he yeah. was very close to winning a lot of those matches. I think that was his career high before. This is his career high again, but it's not his uh, first time in the joy. I think I don't I'm not necessarily calling for a winning record, but I don't think it's going to be a four and 11 S show like it was last time. I think probably like six, seven wins. I bet a Kachi Koshi out of this. Yeah. Would it shock me? I, I'm thinking mm. it would shock worse me, than but it wouldn't home. shock me. I, I'm, yeah. I got to put shocked him at like four shocked. again. Okay. Not that shocked. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of with you on that, but I entirely agree. Like he's a very exciting person to watch. I kind of put him there with Koto Eko and like just like the, they can put on some really good shows and some really good boss shows. Yeah, mm-hmm. kind of smaller, kind of quicker, but not not like tiny, tiny. Just mm-hmm. you know, unflattering on the picture side. on the Sumo database. Yikes! Page. No kidding. <laughs> oh, look at that hair. Oh my! All right, I kind of like this thing where we're guessing how many wins somebody is going to have. So I'm you got some d- more for us? I like. Uh, no, I'm just going to look at a random name and Nishkigi. How many wins, Jake? Uh, probably From like Maigashira 14 West. Nine. 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 I right. think he's he's proved recently that he's okay. Flarek, Nishkigi. 100% with you on nine. Yeah. Eight. Mac. I'm with Mac. Eight. All right. Who's willing to put some <laughs> money down on Nishkigi? Nine some versus eight. Money? No. Low. This is like a new low for us betting. <laughs> All right. Clearly, I don't think we've bet on anybody that low in the Bonds <laughs> Uh I do think we have one more guy that we have to talk about. Future Yokozuna Oyama? Yeah. No, I, no not really. Oh, God. Oh, per- thank God. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Jake? Uh, we have one Makauchi debutante this time around. We have the ever fun to say Wakataka Kage. Wakataka Kage. Wakataka Kage. Oh my God! He's been you practicing. Did it. <laughs> you did it. That is correct, Jake. Wakataka Kage is making his Makauchi debut. He is the lowest ranked Magashira this basho. He is Magashira 16 East. Something we should point out since we have the two Komosubi ranks. We were at like Magashira 17 last time. We're now at Magashira 16. Is going to be the lowest rank, which is one better. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh, He is 24 years old. This is his 17th Basho. He joined Sumo at the Sandanme 100 TD rank, which means he received a Sandanme Tsukedashi to start his career. So he didn't have to start at my Zumo and go through Jono Kuchi and Joni Don. He started right in Sandanme. He has won a Sandanme and a Mikushta Yusho. And ever since he got into Jurio, he has just had a slow and steady rise over the past nine Basho to get to the Makauchi division. He's never had less than six wins and never had more than nine wins. <laughs> yeah, and only two of them, uh, two Basho in his entire career as Makikoshi, and they were both by one. Yeah. He has a seven and eight in Jurio and a three and four in Makushita. So he is a remarkably 
slightly better than average wrestler. And I brought it up on our Bonds K review episode, but I'm going to bring it up again for Mac and Flarick. I believe this now makes Wakataka Kage as the best Shikona in the top division. Can you guys, is there a Shikona you guys like more? Ryan, look at that wall and tell me Taki, what, what does it say. <laughs> I already talked to Jake about this on the episode. Taki. We did already talk about it. I like that Shikona, but probably mostly just because I like Taki. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, it's an average to above average Shikona. It's nowhere near Wakataka Kage. Yeah, I think if in the Are same we going vein, in terms of complexity or just fun to say or just your favorite overall, maybe your favorite is Abi or Enho. I, I do like hmm. the short ones just because they're easy to remember. If exactly, a new guy huh? shows up with a short one, I'm going to remember easily. Enho like, is a nice, short, easy one. Mm-hmm. I probably would have remembered him even if he wasn't small and exciting. You know, mm-hmm. If he was just a generic, boring guy, but he yeah, had a really easy Shikona. It's you like, know? Oh, yeah, the one that's kind of like Endo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Um, in the same vein as Wakatakakage, but doesn't have quite the same like harsh consonants and uh, consistent syllables. Koto Shogiku is another fun Ooh, one. To that say. is good. That is pretty solid. Yeah. I like that one. It, it's so hard to separate the uh, wrestler from the Shikona at this point. Because right. yep. I have some, I have some like just names I absolutely love, like mm-hmm. Hakuho, like Abi at the same time. Asanoyama is kind of getting up there with me too. I, I mentioned yep. that Asanoyama is probably my second favorite one. Yeah, to say. it's like Morning Mountain or something like that, right? Asanoyama, yeah, Mountain of Morning. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's in Wakataka Kage. It's kind of fun to say but that's like pretty much all it has i for it. legit want us to spend time sometime i don't know when but i want us to come up with like our top five shikona and do like a bonus segment Ooh. sometime yeah, maybe not a bonus episode but a that. bonus segment yeah I, I think I one like thing that. that we don't do like very that. often on this like asano yama uh you know mountain of morning or morning's mountain or something like that that'd be we good. don't really we could... break down the name like what they mean and yeah. i think that's something we should do more that's a fun project mm. we'll, we'll work yeah, on that sounds there like was, fun yeah i remember wakataka kage the shikona let me let me look this up because i remember when i was thinking of my dohyos and deshi like name i was oh, like yeah, looking yeah. up Ooh. everyone's like uh actual kanji to see if i can find something and, and waka meant like something young or, or something like that let me see if i can right. look that yeah up. i well, think waka itself means young but yeah, yeah anyway there we go okay i won't look it up i trust you all right <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about some of the lower divisions a little bit and really nothing else matters how sure you is a seki tori ladies bow, and gentlemen bow, bow, bow. He is in the Jurio ranks. And Jake, why don't you scroll down a little bit so I can tell you that Hoshoryu <laughs> is Jurio 13 West making his Sekitori debut. I assume only to get immediately knocked right back down to the Makushita ranks. As is tradition. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, super excited about that. Going to try to watch a lot more of his matches. This is a guy we've been following since the very beginning of his career. Is this the first guy that we've followed? Like followed since the very beginning of their career all the way to Sekitori Hood? Yes. I think so, yeah. So I think we were just a little bit behind on Enho. Yeah, yeah. Enho had already, I think, had already started and had started going 7-0 and 0 by the time that we started the podcast. But Hoshoryu and Naya came in on a really strong class that one year. Then we've been following them since. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right, and just some of the rankings of some of the guys that we follow in the lower divisions. Naya, as we just said, is Makushita 7 East, so it'll probably take a Yusho win for him to get up into the Jurio ranks. Uh, fun fact, Naya's brother is actually entering Simo as well. Yeah, I saw that. He's going to be joining in the uh, Haru Basho. That's where a lot of... Haru. Haru? I thought it was Kyushu. I'm no, like, no, that's that's no. That's I, that's I did look it up. I did, did look it up a little bit. He's going to join Mizumo and Haru in oh, okay. Osaka. That's when a lot of yeah. them join. Yeah, I think that's like with the Japanese school year. That's kind of like yeah, when mm. people tend to. I also saw that enter. there was another Naya. I believe that is their like family name that is planning on joining, but he's not nearly as good as the other two. But yeah. another one of Taiho's <laughs> yeah, yeah. grandchildren is planning on joining. He's as well. that third Manning yeah. brother. I yeah. think <laughs> I think he's like Cooper uh, Manning. Cooper, that's it. <laughs> yeah, he's in collegiate. Uh, I think Sumo right now, not doing terribly too well, is what I've heard. Or. Either that or he's the professional guy in pro wrestling. I'm not. There's so many nice. It's hard to keep it straight. Um, I just wanted to add a little context in case this is the first episode that uh, anybody's listening to. Hoshoryu uh, and Naya are both descendants or relatives of uh, very, very uh, dominant Yokozunas. Dai Yokozunas. Dai Yokozunas, yeah. So um, Hoshoryu is the nephew of Asashoryu, who was probably the number one guy from like 2000 to 2010-ish, somewhere mm-hmm. in that range. And Naya is the grandson of Taiho, who was the Dai Yokozuna of like the 60s. 50s or 60s, something like that. Something like that, yeah. Um, Taiho had, uh, he's, I think he's now been bumped down to third place all time in tournament wins. I think he's 
second. I think is we'll Chiyono Fuji higher or is we'll Taiho have to higher? see if Chiyono Fuji is. I think Taiho is higher than Chiyono Fuji. But I mean, they're both dwarfed by Hakuho. But regardless, yes. Uh, so some of our other guys that we're following, Terra no Fuji, future Sanyaku again is also at, past Sanyaku <laughs> is <laughs> Makushta Ten West. Uh, so once again, unless he wins a U show, he's going to have at least one more Basho in Makushta. Roga, another guy we've been following since the beginning of his career, is Makushta Twenty Eight East. Ryuko, Max' favorite lower division Yo. guy. It, he he was out last time, right? Correct. He was he was, uh, yeah, he had an injury. Yep. So he dropped down to Makushta Forty Three West. Our American favorite Wakaichiro is at his career high rank of Sandanme Thirty Five East. Yeah. If he has USA. an USA. If he has another similar record to the five and two he had in Aki, we could see him join the Makushta ranks next mm-hmm. time. So go Waka Ichiro. I think it would take a little bit more than that, but I mean, he's. I it, like it. I like it. I mean, the amount of ranks he jumped up last time with the five and two record was more than what it would take to get him out of Sandanme. Yeah, so. he went sixty seven to thirty five. So, so if he dropped another thirty some ranks, yeah, he'd be yeah. right on the bubble. Yeah, and coming back after a long absence. Again, a Riso making his triumphant. Oh, wait, not quite, guy. not okay. quite. He's got to grow the hair back. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, Ura down in Joni Don, one hundred and six west, almost the very bottom of Joni Don. Ura is planning on entering the Bonds Cave for the first time since I believe the Hatsu Basho, where he suffered against Hoshoryu another serious knee injury. Mm-hmm. And so, best of luck to Ura, and hopefully, this comeback lasts a little bit longer than the two and a half Basho comeback he had last <laughs> time. Please. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go to news. There's a few items that I'm just going to list off real quick, and then we can get into a little bit more discussion if we want on some of the later items. So Takano Fuji, we talked enough about him and his whole violence thing. He finally stopped dodging the Japan Sumo Association and officially retired. So Takano Fuji has retired, brother of Takagenji, who is now in Juryo and Shame. Uh, Takayasu has gotten engaged. Ishiura had his second child born. Wait, wait, wait. No, we got to talk about Mm -hmm. Takayasu more. (laughs) I literally only know that he was engaged and I have no more. I don't have anything else either, but I mean, like, I wanted to draw it out a little. What what does learn Japanese? What is the thing? It says Takayasu on the wall. Okay. (laughs) Right there on that towel. Uh, Ishiura's second child was born. So congratulations to Ishiura. Uh, Uh, And born uh, as already a champion bodybuilder. Uh, yeah, just like his first one was, uh, <laughs> dethroned Ishiura's first child as the infant bodybuilder champion of the world. Uh, and then we had another scandal. Mm-hmm. This time it wasn't a sumo wrestler, but a Yobidashi, the Tate Yobidashi, the highest ranking Yobidashi, Takuro, uh, had a scandal that resulted in his retirement during the Junyo event, which took place on October the 8th. Uh, Early in the morning, I'm just reading this straight from Tachi I blog, so if you want to uh, get a little bit more details on that, you can go to the Tachi I blog. But early in the morning, before the event started on October the 8th, he spotted a Jonidan Yobidashi who was having his breakfast sitting in the customer seating area. He reprimanded him for that and accompanied the reprimand with a punch to the head. He then turned to a Makushta Yobidashi who was sitting nearby and reprimanded him too. You see your Ototo Dashi doing this and you're not disciplining him? This was accompanied by a slap to the Makushta Yobidashi's back. Uh, The Makushta Yobidashi decided to discuss this with another employee who then passed on the report until it reached Kasugano Oyakata, the Jungyo master, and Takuro's Heia master. Yeah. Uh... I, are you are done reporting on it? Or? I was going to read a few more details. Okay, go, go, ahead, and, go ahead and finish it. Okay, so uh, Kasugano, Oya, Kasugano Oyakata called the men involved and verified the basic facts, reported it to the compliance committee, and uh, Takuro, uh, he sent him back for temporary home confinement. Takuro had apologized to the victims, and then he decided to hand in his res- resignation on, on October 15th. Uh, the JSA at the time was not accepting his resignation. Uh, they have since, after a couple of weeks, accepted his oh, resignation. They actually accepted it. Yes. Yeah. I know it's usually like it's customary to always like put in your resignation, uh, yeah. but it's not always the case whether they actually accept it. Yeah. The JSA was going to offer just like I think it was a two basho suspension. But they did end up accepting his resignation. So oh, wow. the Tate Yobidashi has uh, retired in scandal. And I think it was the Tate Gyoji 
that had to retire and scandal yeah. mm-hmm. either uh, earlier this year technically or last year. second but yeah he was the highest one at the time yeah yeah so yeah not a good time to be the highest ranked gyoji and yobidashi <laughs> yeah for sure uh so my my thought on when i heard this was is i was actually very hopeful hearing this uh because it granted like it was kind of a knock in the head it's kind of bad but like a slap to the back like i that didn't sound too terribly it's, bad to it's me, nothing right? overly bad right? yeah but it was still something that they went through channels they reported it to the committee and actually something happened from that they are very clearly taking a zero tolerance policy with mm-hmm. the whole violence thing yeah. which i like yeah i like that they're yeah. doing this and they actually reported it which i think was really cool so yeah, i'm yeah. actually very hopeful that future like violent events are going to be reported and actually something's gonna happen from it it definitely seems like the system is working it, it seems like one of those things where we're gonna have to find a balance in here somewhere because not every single transgression is worth ending a career for mm-hmm. so it, it it's one of those things where we're probably going to have more retirements before we kind of find a, a new balance of where of what is acceptable. Obviously, punching somebody in the face is like not yeah, cool. That's, you that's get fired from pretty much cool. any job for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, there, there's going to some. We're we're probably going to see a handful more, and I hate that that is going to contribute to this whole idea that sumo is you know just covered in scandals, yeah. but. <laughs> So it's, they're in a transition period, so it's going yeah, yeah, from not punching people to not punching favors, people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's getting better. I, I remember seeing some videos of like just training in the 80s and stuff, and it was harsh. Like just Oh, like, yeah. Oh, definitely. Like just like spinning while on people like while they're down, like kicking them and stuff during training. It was just it was a different time. Mm-hmm. Like they the people who survived that were tough, tough people. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, kind of speaking of disciplinary things that don't need to end up in retirement as i kind of alluded to before we have abby so i finally get the juicy details on this one right so abby and wakamoto haru have officially been it is a pretty good one the whole waka clan is just fantastic uh but abby and wakamoto haru have officially been disciplined by the japan sumo association so there was an instagram video that came out with wakamoto haru tied up with like tape and like on the ground like his mouth was taped his hands were taped together his feet were taped together and it was done by abi and the video was posted online and uh, apparently the japan sumo association didn't like it seemed like it was all in good fun like it was kind of in retaliation for like some friendly thing that wakamoto haru had done similar to Mm abi it really doesn't seem like there's any ill will involved in this at all but they did have to write official apologies to the Japan Sumo Association. There will be no further punishment for them, but they were officially disciplined hmm. by the Japan Sumo Association. I, I hate that social media has kind of done this. I, like, I'm going to sound mm-hmm. like a grumpy old the geezer sport of here. Sumo. <laughs> but, like, you know, I, I lived in a dorm. You know, you fart on a guy's pillow. He ties you up with tape. But, you know, like, that's... <laughs> Your roommate had it coming, though. He did. <laughs> he did start that. I don't so know did how. my roommate. <laughs> you duct tape oh. a guy in a chair, you roll him down a you hall. You did what to my happens. pillow? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Ryan and Flarek were, were roommates for a few years in college. Yeah, four and a half years. <laughs> yeah. Just um, a couple. But, yeah, I mean, I don't... That seems, like, so silly. And, like, the dumb shit that I got into, like, we didn't really ha- have yeah. Instagram handy, so I didn't get in trouble for it. So, yeah. like, whatever. I think it's more that they're just held to a higher standard oh, of yeah, behavior yeah. than a college dorm boy. <laughs> <laughs> college dorm man, man. man. <laughs> we were men, Ryan. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, it was it's, just a written apology, so it's not like the... Yeah. It was a slap on the wrist. Yeah. yeah. It, did Was it necessary? Probably not, but... Yeah, I, what would what would we have lost by that just being forgotten in the mm-hmm. in the annals of Instagram? Exactly. I think it's uh, overreaction. It was like I the what I read it was like kind of vague, but yeah, it's just like taping someone up with like tape. It's I don't think it's. A I, big I think deal. it's they've had some very severe, deathly issues with ha- hazing in the past, mm-hmm. and this uh, could be seen mm-hmm. as hazing. And mm-hmm. once again, just kind of zero tolerance. Don't do this. And I, I could see why they did it. I get the understanding, but yeah. I, I do think uh, slightly overboard. Once again, nothing really happened, so it's not that big yeah. of a deal. I, I guess I'm kind of, I can see that a little bit more now. That, yeah, I don't know. That topic. I, I, I think it is important for context that Wakamoto Haro is also a Sekitori. He's yeah. Yeah. near the bottom of the Jurio division, um, but he yeah. he's still a Sekitori. He's still on that, like, you know, pedestal 1A 
mm-hmm. you know, yeah. uh, of the top yeah. of the chain. It's there, not like a, some 15 year old kid that just joined or something. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not a, in the same stable, so it's not. Oh, like, not even. Okay. No, yeah. they're, they're in separate. I think they're in the same Ichiman, but they're just friends. So they're like right. in the same, they're like in the same neighborhood of dorm rooms that these Heyas are. Yeah. You know, just <laughs> there we go. pulling but, stuff on each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah, know. I there there is like you said, like he definitely is a Sekitori, but there is a power difference. I now like yeah, think yeah. about a little bit more. That's fair. Yeah. So I I I I agree with you that I think there is probably something should have been said. Now that I think about it more, it, it just makes me sad because I think this will lead to less personality kind of coming out from them. Yeah, yeah, that's true. If the, I can, I might deny Abby some of his skill in the ring, but he has. He just seems like the most likable fellow in he's the world. Always he's always smiling. Second most likable at I best. I swear to God if you said Takayasu. <laughs> Chiyomaru. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Chiyomaru's my, Instagram is the best boy. follow that my I've ever seen. Boy. <laughs> that in reaction video For of him sure. with the roach. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Chiyomaru, like, his, he pulls pranks. Like, that's the only thing he does on Instagram is oh, pull pranks totally. on people. Yeah, he's not, like, taping people He falls people asleep up, on top of his brother. Yeah. He steals candy. His, <laughs> my favorite one that I, I, I only know this because other people translated it, but he, like, goes around to people and, like, wakes them up. If they're, like, taking a nap backstage or something, he goes, hey, 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 get some rest while you can. <laughs> and they're like, okay. <laughs> and he just, like, walks away and then does it again five minutes later. <laughs> Rest right. up. You should rest up while you can. <laughs> I, I think it's far beyond time that we hit a commercial break and come back with predictions, uh, fantasy contest stuff, and something a little new we're going to start following. This holiday season, give the gift of sumo literature, sumo on tape, the most comprehensive collection of sumo classics, now as audiobooks. Our introductory collection is the complete works of the great author Charles Thickens, including such tales as All for a Twisting Pull Down. Please, sir, may I have a tremendous amount more? And what of his great work, A Tale of Two Heias? It was the best of Chanko. It was the worst of Chanko. It was the age of Tachi Eyes. It was the age of Henkas. The Basho of Kachi Koshis. The Basho of Make Koshis. And perhaps the author's finest novel, A Chanko Carol wherein lonely miser Endonezer Scrooge learns the true meaning of Chonko by sharing among his heia, including poor Tiny Enho. Bah humbug, what is this nonsense before me? Three bowls of Chonko? I am the empty bowl of Chonko past. Wash me before I attract flies. They're like super hard to get rid of. Journey with me through the memories of flavor that you once share. Why, that's my old partner, Jacob Mace. <laughs> <laughs> Come in and smell me better, man. I am the steaming pot of Chunko present. See here, your stablemate sharing joyously what little stew they have. Is this not a merry feast? Bah, why, that's we, tiny Enho. Surely there's Chunko enough to go around. What's this? Are you the third spirit that was foretold to me? The still alive chicken of Chunko future? Spirit, no! A tiny bear mawashi with no bearer? Could this be what remains of tiny Enho? Sweet, innocent, tiny baby Enho. No, I must change my ways. I must share my chonko. All this and more can be yours, or even as a last-minute gift for that relative on the go. These audiobooks let you take classic sumo stories anywhere. Go to sumoontape.com and enter promotional code Grand Sumo Breakdown to receive... Great Expectations, the story of Asa no Yama, as a bonus. Order today, and hakiyoi. All right, we're back, and we are going to start off with something new we're going to be following, Jake. What? Yeah, we're all going to be following You're going to be following me? <laughs> we're going to keep track of all of his activities throughout the day and report it back onto this podcast so everybody as, knows. As daily bonus episodes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are going to introduce... The GSB belt. 15-minute poop at work today, I see. <laughs> I, I don't want to arouse suspicion, so I'm usually quicker than that. <laughs> you have to change it up, yeah. We are going to be following the GSB belt. This is an award that is just a straight-up linear title. So if you beat the guy that has the belt, you get the belt, and then you pass it along to whoever beats you. And, you know, you, you can defend it in the meantime indefinitely, you know, uh, uh, it, you know, the you only way you keep it forever is if you never lose. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I, I, what, I don't know what I. I don't know. That word is going to come back to me mid next <laughs> sentence. Uh, but yeah, you can you can keep it indefinitely as long as you're winning. Um, 
but uh, where would we start? You know, how would we just determine who gets the belt to begin with? I say from the bottom. Hattori I, I agree with you guys. <laughs> what we're going to do is the very first match of the Kyushu tournament is going to be the inaugural GSB belt match. Whoever wins that mm. is going to get the title. Whoever beats that guy next gets the title. And we'll follow that belt up the ranks until finally someday it should reach Yokozuna. It's never going to get out of Joni Don. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I actually did a couple test cases because I wanted to see if this was going to be a fun idea or not. And uh, I tried three different times, and all three times it took about a year to a year and a half. So I think this this could be fun, and it could... Uh, to get to Makuchi? To get to the Yokozuna at the very no, top. To get to the Yokozuna? And actually a lot of that time is getting stalled out in the upper divisions because of Kyujos and things like that. Mm-hmm. Oh. But uh, So oh. we're going to see how long it takes to uh, get to the top. Based on the rankings, yeah, it's probably going to be Hitori Zakura fighting for the <laughs> Fight inaugural on, belt. Samurai. Fight on. And I'm sure he'll defend it for ages. <laughs> <laughs> No, this but, is um, finally going to be his Basho. I can feel it in yes, my bones. This will be his multi-winner. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're going to follow that on the midway. Uh, at, you know, in the in the lower divisions, obviously, there's only the seven matches per Basho. So, um, you know, there may only be a match or two to start with. Uh, but as we move along into the higher divisions, uh, we'll have more news to report each each episode. And we'll, we'll plan to do this after a commercial break. It'll only take like, you know, a minute yeah. or so each time. But we want to follow it up. Uh, to the very top. And one thing that I noticed when I was doing the test cases is it passes through a lot of names that I recognized. Like Goedo held a belt. Uh, I, I started, you know, back in the early 2000s, and for some reason, Goedo happened to have it in San Danme or something like that. Oh. So, like, I, I think what could be cool here is if... We're going to be finding the potential stars of the future. Exactly. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's very scientific. But, like, if, if a guy holds the belt for, like, four wins in a tournament, that's pretty cool. We'll probably remember that name if he makes it up to Jurio or something and we start hearing about <laughs> him again. If he makes it up. <laughs> yeah, just saying. Like, that's... It's, um, you know, it... it, it went through a lot more names than I would have expected mm-hmm. when I started that, when I started that project. So, uh, that'll be fun to follow and I'll just, uh, catch you guys up on how many title matches we had, uh, after our commercial breaks. Awesome. I feel like we'll have, we'll know how many title matches there were. Hey, just I mean, how many title changes there were. Will well, be I am really counting on the fact that none of you appear to care too much. So I will be able to surprise you. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge accepted. Fair exactly. enough. Yep. <laughs> Let's move on to the prediction series. And if you weren't listening to our bonus episode, our Kisei no Sato bonus episode, first of all, what's wrong with you? Go back and listen to it. <laughs> uh, that's a Yokozuna. Learn about his history. Uh, Scrubs. But in that episode, we ended up putting a prediction point on the line for Flarek and Mac. And so because of that, Mac will be beginning the prediction series with negative one point, and Flarek will be beginning the prediction series at positive one point. Heck and yeah. when our scores hover around like three or four points, that's a big deal. <laughs> yes. I feel like I should have earned a prediction point just by running the inflatable race in a sumo suit. I was the only one that committed to that. Started committed to that and did it twice. Well, you should should have said that before you did it. Yep, should have had some (laughs) handshakes for that one. (laughs) My video has gotten more watches than Bubbles and Piper. How dare you? Piper... I dare. (laughs) Bubbles is a saint. Piper is not, but she's a No, but she's very cute. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So if you want to find out how Mac and Flarek got their respective bonus points or negative bonus points, just check out the Keys and Osado episode. What's wrong with you? So let's move on to the prediction series itself. We are going to be predicting six different categories. The Yusho winner, the June Yusho winner, a winner of a special prize. We're going to predict who is going to get a Kinboshi and who they beat. That will be our tiebreaker. We're going to predict somebody to get a Makekoshi above the rank of Magashira 8 and somebody to get a Kachikoshi below the rank of Magashira 9. So Jake, as the loser of our last prediction series, he will get the first pick and then it'll go in order of how we ended our previous prediction series and then snake back around to Jake. So Jake, you show winner. Who you got? Mac, what does it say on that towel on my wall? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know Japanese. It says Takayasu. Oh, does it? And I think Hakuho is going to win the Yusho. <laughs> a wise move. All right. I, next I, pick I goes see, to Flarek. I see even your fuzzy math can't change that <laughs> equation right there. <laughs> There's a lot of math. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go with uh, the cock reel. Got to go with the cock. I'm ne- going with the ass. Ass uh, no what? gamma. <laughs> oh, okay. 
Ah. Uh, I thought I thought you were gonna say Takara Fuji. Oh, no. <laughs> the no. ass. No, 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 no. You leave me in a tough spot because ah. we picked the three guys you were going to pick. No, I wasn't going to pick Asano Yama. I think my third guy is Takakesho. I'm going to stick with Takakesho. I like it. All right, that brings it around to me to select who I think will win the Jun Yu show. And if Hakuho isn't winning Yu shows, he's typically winning Jun Yu shows. So let's go with Hakuho. I'm going with Takak. We're just going to go in reverse order of Yu show as per the usual. Yeah, as prob- per the Yu as per usual. I, I would say that I think. If uh, Kakryu is not winning the Yusho, I think there's a good chance that he's going to pull out. So, But maybe not. Who knows? I am going to go with uh, Takakesho. I am going to break this pattern and not pick the exact same guys that we picked before. <laughs> um, I am Show going Ho's to... Show on bold choice. No. <laughs> Tamawashi. <laughs> Heavens no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think I'm actually going to pick Goedo. Oh, when has that worked out for anybody on this podcast? Uh, it worked out that one time he got a Zen show. You show when we weren't recording yet. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like I got some points from him at one point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for special prizes next uh, in our snake draft. That means the next pick is me and I am going to go with Asano Yama. Next pick would be Flerick. Oh, snap. Okay. So let me pull up. <laughs> I now need to I now figure out. Think about these things. Who is wrestling this time? <laughs> <laughs> all right so asano is pretty good <laughs> yep oh yes I, I think i just gotta keep with my anime protagonist and keep with abby i'm gonna go with dae show that one's pretty bold has he ever gotten any i don't believe so i'm gonna go with somebody who's gotten a plethora mitake yumi that's a good one all right next is going to be kimboshi and who they oh, beat snap. and this is a this is a conundrum for me. I don't have my go to of Hokuto Fuji <laughs> to use uh, anymore. There's a serious dearth of contenders for this particular award. <laughs> Sweet word choice. I am gonna thank you. I'm gonna go with somebody who does have at least one Keen Boshi under his belt recently, as of last Basho, and that is Daisho. I'm gonna have him toppling the cock. Doing a little more research. Okinoomi actually has more Kinboshi, so he is my pick. Damn, he's I, also older. That's who I want opportunities. Yes. And he's going to get it over the hawk. All right, look at one, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, Takara eleven, Fuji four, is the lowest one to, that's guaranteed Thank to you. be in the joint. I am going to be rescuing say Tomokase. I believe in Takayasu mm-hmm. dropping out. And who do you think he's going to beat? Oh, uh, two and zero oh against Kakuryu. He is two and zero oh against Kakuryu. Yeah, I'll go with Kakuryu. Okay. I don't trust anyone that is remaining. Trust the ass. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm going to go Mio Giryu oh. over Kakuryu. All right. Because that is a guy who is remaining that I can pick. All right, Jake. Select a Make Koshi for somebody ranked above Magashira 8. All right. So the, the two that jump out at me are Meisei and Enho. And Meisei's in the joy, so I'm going to go with him. Very solid. Uh, Flerick next, then Mac. I will just kind of... Well, I did say five, so I need to continue with Enho. I'm predicting Kotoyuki. Ah! That rat bastard. <laughs> that rat bastard. I wanted that rat bastard. <laughs> uh, so I will go with the firmest ass cheeks that Ooh. side of the Pacific and go with Takara Fuji. <laughs> right, because I'm over here. <laughs> Oh, damn. That was good. Well played. Uh, and so now I get to choose Kache Koshi from Maigashira 9 or below. And I don't think I'm going out on too large of a limb if I select. Oh, uh, do I believe? I believe somehow I believe more in Shodai than Shio you. What? <laughs> That's a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I get to pick my boy. Chiyomaru. That's probably a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I believe. I believe in you, Chiyomaru. I see why Mac tends to lose a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I pick with my heart. <laughs> he's overtaken by the charisma that is Chiyomaru. While also already being down a point. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> two points to Flarek. What? Two points? Yeah, because yeah. he's starting at plus one. Yeah. You have negative one. Eh. That's I'll make worse. it up. <laughs> I'll make it up. Flarek. Uh, what do you think? That's a very good question. I hadn't thought of it until now. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of did. I, I think I'm going to go with Kota Shogiku. Ooh. All right. That's a good pick. That was my 
That was my next pick. If you hadn't picked Chio Tyryu. Jake got oh. his number one overall. Yes, I did. I'm slot. shocked that he fell that far. Uh, so now we need to draw from the Bolo punishments. Where is the Bolo punishments? Jake needs to draw. Oh, that's right. Loser draws. Yes. yes. Okay, here we go. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Give this is one drink. that we've this is one that we have had in here for a while, but haven't and actually luckily taken have it. avoided it for quite a while. Mm-hmm. And now I'm feeling a lot better about Max negative one point. <laughs> uh, loser must take a shot of hot sauce every ten minutes of the podcast recording. Hey. The size Ooh. and brand of the shot is to be determined during the preview or midway episode. Ah. Well, since we have done zero research on it at this point, let's, yeah, I kind of forgot it was in that to the midway. We'll punt that one, but <laughs> like point that. being, we don't want to like wait until the the very end. With one exception, now, Jake, if I were to ask you, what is Mac's biggest weakness? Uh, I would say it's his. Uh, I would say it's his weak esophagus. It is most <laughs> definitely his weak esophagus. <laughs> it is indeed. So if. If Mac happens to lose somehow, <laughs> only the guy that has lost the most of these and is already starting off in last place and just happens to have damn food allergies. I do indeed. We're, we're probably just going to do like the nerf shooting him with a nerf gun copious amounts because we'd rather have him in slightly less pain than have him actually dead. Yeah, <laughs> but we'll see. We'll Thank see. you. <laughs> Maybe so, we'll put some hot sauce on the darts. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> oh, God, why? But the rest of us will Bang. be... Ow. Ow. Sizzle. <laughs> the rest of us will be men and take the hot sauce <laughs> as our we are. strong, burly esophagi. <laughs> yes. Shut up, crone boy. <laughs> and it's not... It's not ju- <laughs> that's, that's very fair. I do have a crone. Ooh, May- pulling out the crones. <laughs> May- maybe I should take a, uh, a doctor's note on this one as well with the, <laughs> with with the crone's disease. I do have You very literally f- have to bring us a doctor's note if you want out <laughs> yes, of this one. Yes, you do. I have very flimsy internal organs. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I've lost what I was going... Oh, no. We're not going to go with just like <laughs> Frank's red hot. It, it's going to hurt. Oh, yeah, and, and when we... I, burn we put going in, this, in and burn coming out. Yeah, we put in this corollary about the size and brand of shot to be determined ahead of time because we're not, like, talking ounce and a half shot glass. <laughs> You're not <laughs> talking ounce and a half shot glass. Wait, what, I am not? trying my damnedest not to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I... Please, no. Not again. Exactly. <laughs> That's I was awful. about to say, Flair, you've been pretty quiet about this. What are your opinions? <laughs> we're going to turn Ow. in... We're going <laughs> we're gonna to figure out a painful but not fatal uh t- dosage of of the capsaicin yeah. here yeah i forgot oh that this is the part of the podcast where flair turns his brain off <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about what now yeah. what's that now okay so Jake, uh, uh, to make sure to follow us on <laughs> soon. Uh, not yet no not yet. no not yet. No. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> come back uh so jake i i have noticed that you and i are simultaneously at an advantage and disadvantage for the prediction series. And I was curious if you wanted to give both of us the shot of kind of evening the numbers with Mac and Flarek, or if we were just cool riding in with a solid zero to start things off. Uh, I can't remember which side of this you were on. Who do you think is going to do worse, Maysay or Enho? Uh, I, mm, I think Maysay. Okay. That's what I think, too. So that's not worth a point. All right. Eh. If we come up with something by the midway, yeah. we could throw it in I, there. I'd be open to making a bet if it looks like I'm still going to beat Mac. Yeah. I, al- <laughs> I also forced kind of, I also kind of forced uh, Flarek and Mac into putting a prediction series point online. Yes, you did. Mm-hmm. So if they want to come up with something for us on the midway, something fair on the midway episode, <laughs> I would be open to that as well. So I think right we'll, now we'll, we'll we're going to slide. Yeah, we're going to slide we'll in. about that. Jake and I will slide in, start off with Is zero that points. A young Oyama? Oh, yeah. Hey, I. Don't don't get too far ahead here. No, I'm it's just too looking late. ahead you, on the. You're, uh, you're tantalizing. I he, don't like this. He didn't walk out of a mountain as he was a fully formed thirty year old. It's a flopping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The fact that we're looking at young pictures of Aoyama surely means that it's time for fun facts. Uh, yes, it is time for well more of a more of one of our short biographies than uh, than fun facts. But uh, Aoyama, uh, you're right? Because it, no fact about Aoyama is fun. A couple of these are, are kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> um. But Aoyama is Bulgarian. He is the second Bulgarian rikshi after current uh, Oyakata Naruto, uh, who reached the Ozeki rank, one rank below, coincidentally, where Aoyama is going to reach in the future. Right, Ryan? (laughs) Screw off. Uh, Aoyama is 33. He was born in Bulgaria as Daniel Ivanov, (laughs) which I think is the funniest sumo wrestler name I've come across. I don't know. Ivanov is pretty badass. Future Yokozuna Dan. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I really like that one. 
Um, but uh, he he was actually a uh, collegiate style wrestler for ten years, and he did amateur sumo for three years before he actually followed Kota Oshu uh, over to Japan to do sumo wrestling. Uh, he joined Taganoura Stable, and his coach ax- uh, asked him, "Do you prefer mountains or rivers?" Since he chose mountains, he was given the rig name Aoyama, which mm. uh, literally translates to Blue Mountain. So he could have just as easily been Blue River. Which would be a lot Kawa. less interesting. <laughs> no, <laughs> that would have been Kawa. Kawa, like your uh, like your D and D character. My Dungeons and Deshi. So my Doyos and Deshi's name. Yeah, Aoi go. Kawa. Aoi Kawa. Aoi Kawa. Could be. I mean, there's Blue plenty River. of ways that you can pronounce different words, but that that would certainly be, be one Wakakawa. Way. Young River. Ooh. Yeah, Flarek's picking up Japanese left and right here. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so he, he entered at the very bottom. He didn't have like, you know, university bump or anything like we were talking about earlier for Wakataka Kage. Um, he started at the very bottom, but within two years was in Jurio and now oh, he's wow. he annihilated the early ranks and then just kind of, he, he didn't slow down whatsoever until, um, his first tournament in Jurio was his first Maki, or excuse me, only a second Maki Koshi. I was going to say false. He had a two and five at Makushita five. And then a three and four at a different Makushita. And then his third Maki Koshi <laughs> was in Jurio. But he was doing so well in the ones where he was winning that he, yeah, he just rocketed whoa, through. Whoa, whoa. Tournament canceled? What's uh, yeah, that's the match fixing. Yeah. Um, yeah. The match fixing back in 2011. We did an episode about that. Yes, we, we did. sure did. He hadn't quite made it to Jurio at that point, but it was that same year that he made it to Jurio. Um, it, and here is a fact that even you, Ryan, might find fun. Uh, he got a five and two from the very top slot in Makushta and got promoted to Jurio four. Okay, uh, you, you've you've titillated the uh, Bonske loving side of me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so he rocketed like two thirds of the way up the Jurio oh, Bonske. Was that the one where everyone got kicked out? That's the one. Ah. Yep. So a bunch of people had to quit after that uh, <laughs> match fixing scandal. So he got a handful of spots more than he should have. That's more I, than a handful. Yes. Uh, it's an Aoyama, Aoyama's chest sized handful. That I'd agree with. <laughs> um, but yeah, so since then he's been hovering in the Makushita rank or and the Makauchi ranks, often very high. He's been in the Sekitori ranks a handful of times here. Um, but, uh, he is never strung together like a, a U show or anything like that. Uh, in the very first tournament that we covered though, he actually hit his absolute apex of his career so far and got a June U show with a 13 and two. Uh, that was, uh, um, September of 2017. Um, other than that though, uh, he, he is one of the biggest of all time. He is in the range of the, that was Nagoya. Of yeah. 2017. There was September, that was the one before we started covering. You're just following apart in this fun fact segment. I can read the things. I just didn't write the things out. So now I'm just winging it. <laughs> <laughs> Which we've never done on this podcast before. Never. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm sorry. That was the tournament just before we started. The one where we started, he went three, five, and seven. That, that was like less good. Aoyama that I like. But we were mesmerized by his movements. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us were. Mesmerized. Hypnotized. Um, but yeah, ever since he made it into uh, the Makauchi ranks in 2011, he has only dropped down to Jurio for one tournament, uh, where he dropped down to Jurio 2, got a 9 and 6, came right back. That was just last year. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, as far as his size goes, though, uh, he is the th- 30th-ish biggest rickshaw ever, and that's just because weight fluctuates a lot you know he's he's in that neighborhood uh but he is one of the 39 wrestlers ever to top 200 kilograms on their recorded weight Dang. and uh that's something that's i thought was kind of funny of those 39 16 are active right now oh. so almost half of the guys that top 200 <laughs> ever are still active right now and uh just goes to show you that people are getting bigger and stronger it, just like any other sport uh mm-hmm. you know as as time goes on the the level of athleticism that it attracts you know yeah. can the, get bigger the training methods get better yeah the, yeah the tasty food gets better <laughs> and and in in you know uh, in the 21st century medicine is advanced to the point where you can maintain that weight and not like yeah. instantly die mm-hmm. <laughs> which is key to being good at sumo wrestling uh a psa don't do sumo if yeah <laughs> <laughs> if there's one thing you learn from this podcast watch sumo don't do it <laughs> Um, he has one gold star in his career over Haruma Fuji. Um, and one thing that was pretty funny here, uh, let's see, which tournament was this? This was September of 2017. 
Um, oh yeah, so the the tournament I was talking about, the first one that we that we covered, uh, he started the tournament on the bench, uh, and then he entered at the halfway mark and was instantly put against a Yokozuna, <laughs> which was the first time that had happened uh, since 1961 for somebody to come back in the middle of a tournament and just no screw you, you get the Yokozuna. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Um, but yeah, so Aoyama, uh, like I mentioned, he's, he's on the wrong side of 30 here. So he's, he's, um, you know, probably towards the tail end of his athletic prime. Uh, and he, I've, I've always enjoyed his sumo. He's one of the purest <laughs> pusher thrusters out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'll be a shame when he retires because he is always one of the funnest guys to talk about and claim to Ryan that he is a future Yokozuna. Clearly, clearly. At least you're admitting that it's just a farce because we all know that he is, no more than... He's got the division right where he wants them. Exactly. Oh, clearly. Clearly. He's like around the same age as uh, Hakuho. He's up so. jump Jirio trash Fine. is what he is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's all I got on Aoyama. Um, yeah, and he's only 42. You should be behind Hakuho too. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Plenty of time. That's, uh, that's just about as far behind as I am. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Future that's right. Yo- future Yokozuna Jake. I have as yeah. many you show as Aoyama. Ooh. Um, but yeah, so that's all I got on him. Um, I, he's one of those wrestlers that uh, probably not necessarily worth like a full bonus episode on him when he retires, but I would be remiss to not at least cover him at some point real quick. So, um, le- uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to take the initiative and just move on from <laughs> Aoyama because the less Aoyama talk, always the better. Oh, Lord. So we had a fantasy contest to determine who was going to join us in Fantasy Sumo. It was tell us what Rickshie are wearing for Halloween this year. And we had a lot of good submissions, but we decided our winner was at KC Mustang as he chose Hokuto Fuji as Chunk from the Goonies. <laughs> and what really put him over the top, not only was he appeasing me by choosing Hokuto Fuji, he also included a gif of the truffle shuffle to put him over the edge. Uh, quick straw poll, uh, gif or jif? Gif. Gif. Shut up. Gif. Okay, thank God. I <laughs> needed to know if we needed to kick somebody off the podcast. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, so, yeah, he. we already had our fantasy draft with him. Somehow Aoyama's on my team. Yeah. <laughs> that was <laughs> Good painful pick. Solid. for you to watch. It, uh, but it yeah, was the, really painful. The, the full fantasy uh, teams and all that will be posted up on our blog, uh, along with the sumo power rankings coming into this tournament. Yes. So, as always, how we wrap up our preview podcast, we will talk about what we are most excited for in this upcoming Basho. Mac, what are you most excited for? I want to see Tochi Notion title defense. Like, will he get the 10? I don't know, but I'm going to be glued to the screen. Probably not at all hours, since they don't stream those anymore. But it's super late. It's an hour sooner now that That daylight savings time is over. It only ends at 3 a.m. now. (laughs) Correct. (laughs) I don't know if I can keep my eyes open for that long. But anyway, watching Tochi Notion try to reclaim his title and keeping my eyes out on Mitaki Yumi, hoping that he can put it together. Yeah, that's going to be a great storyline watching Tochi Notion. I'm just going to double down on Mitaki Yumi. I I love me Nozeki Race. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to be watching him, hoping he gets uh, 10 or 11 wins. For me, uh, joke answer, Aoyama doing really well, <laughs> making Ryan's fantasy team succeed and also somehow making him sad at the same time. Real answer, uh, the guys that I really like that are all injured, I want to have them participate and hopefully overcome those injuries. Takiyasu, Tochi Notion, both Yokozuna. I, I'm exci- I'm, I guess I'm more anxious, but generally positive. But uh, I, I, I want all those guys to be healthy, and I, I hope to see that. Yeah. Uh, for me, I want to see how Takakesho looks after his injury. I want to see if he is in full Ozeki form. He's probably in my top three of favorite guys, and so I want to see him have a long, successful career, and I think it begins by not exacerbating that <laughs> peck tear that he had last time. So I'm going to go with Takakesho doing well. Uh, so that is everything that you need to know for the Kyushu Basho. I dare you to find a topic we did not cover so if you enjoyed don't this, look very hard though don't no, no, no please, please don't. don't not too hard we, I mean, it's not like we didn't mention Teretsu Yoshi or Daishomaru or anybody uh, those scrubs <laughs> <laughs> we, we talked about them on the Bonske review episode so if you want to hear a couple of words about everybody go there Daishomaru for instance we even have an opinion on him yeah. I think that he is the most fish like looking uh, wrestler in I the disagree division. I think it's Mitaki Yumi to find more on who looks <laughs> the most like a fish <laughs> 
check out our bonus episode where we're talking about Shikonas. <laughs> we're also going to talk about fish. Or don't. We wouldn't blame you. Hey, let's wrap up this podcast. If you enjoy this Yay. podcast, you can leave us a five-star re- Flarex favorite part of the episode. <laughs> the end. I'm tired. I'm ready to go home. <laughs> leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast listening service. You can find us on social media. Uh, I think Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You Grant can write them down. <laughs> or just look at the outline. That's, that's I don't have an outline from me. I'm sorry. It's literally on that screen. Our blog is grandsumobreakdown.com. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I can now Flirt. see it. I'm so disappointed. Control yourself. Quit knocking things off my Let's table. Let's go home. If you have any uh, questions, comments, corrections, or words of advice, we could definitely use that on this show. Uh, drop us a line at grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com or give us a call at 805-613-7866. That's 805-613-SUMO. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Grand Sumo Breakdown. Until next time, throw your salt high and keep moving forward. (laughs) (laughs) See you later.